somebody. He came back up later and he said, there are protesters outside the house. And I pulled my gun and I asked them to leave. Uh, up until now, I've not really wanted to share with you what it's been like. But I think it's time because there's a bigger purpose here. As District Attorney of LA County, I have received threats, some of them death threats. I have been followed, photographed while with my family, confronted at art, an art museum, confronted at fundraisers, even at endorsement interviews have had people crash them and videotape me. And all of this is because I chose to do my job. I'm a human being. I'm a public servant. I've dedicated my life to the profession that stands up for victims of violent crime. And I'm not ashamed of that. And I'm not sorry that I'm doing that. As district attorney, the minute you take this job, you're going to anger people. People are going to be angry because you either did file a case or you didn't file a case. But your job is to uphold the Constitution, to uphold the laws of the state of California, and to be fair, and to only do things that you know in your heart of heart are the right things, even if it means you will suffer personal consequences. That's who I am, and that's who I will always be. Now you can imagine, believe it or not, the Lacy's are private people. We expect that people will exercise their First Amendment right. But our home is our sanctuary. And we do not believe, I do not believe, it is fair or right for protesters to show up at the homes of people who dedicate their lives to public service. This is not the first time this has happened. And maybe I was lulled into a sense of security. In the past, I have offered to meet with Black Lives Matters, but I felt it should be either one-on-one -on -one or a small group. They have rejected those offers. It seems like what they like is to embarrass me and intimidate me. My hope is that one day that might change. That maybe, just maybe, if I keep reaching out, that someone will want to sit down and have a conversation that's productive. I would like to say that I'm the only one that experiences this. Right now it's escalating for me, but I can't help but notice that the chair of the state Democratic Party, he too had protesters at his home recently, that the Nevada, chairman of the Nevada state party had protested at, at his or her home. I want to say, what is the end game? Seems to me that we all have the right to speak our mind. And we can speak in many different forums. You can vote. That's one way to speak your mind. But to publicly humiliate people, to say to them, 
you know, I hate you, that you're a racist, what progress will we make in this world if that's how we talk to one another? <clears throat> During the last debate, I shared that my dad had been shot in his front yard. One protester yelled out, good. And when I said he didn't die, that same protester said, that's too bad. Who among you in this room could listen to that day in and day out and not be hurt? I am grateful however, for this challenge, because I had no idea how strong I was until I got ready to come down here today. And sometimes it takes challenges like this for you to realize what you are made of, who you are as a human being. I, uh, my husband, I spoke to him just before I came here. His um, response was in fear. And now that he realizes what happened, he wanted to, me to say to the protesters, the person that he showed the gun to, that he was sorry. And he's profoundly sorry that he meant no one any harm. That it was just him and I in that house. And we really didn't know what was about to happen. I too am sorry if anybody was harmed. It's never my intent to harm any protester. I just want to live in peace and do my job. I want to thank you for coming today and uh, open it up to any questions, if there are. Jackie, I totally get what you're saying. It's, it would be very difficult to, you know, like live through the kind of stuff that you're going through, but your office has prosecuted people for things like this. And in the video, it looks like your husband has his finger on the trigger. Like this could have turned into something very, very serious, more serious than it was. So what do you say to that? Our office has turned this over to another agency, obviously, because I'm involved. And I really don't have any remarks to make because I wasn't down there at the time. My husband and I are people of faith. <coughs> And we just trust God that he's going to bring us through this challenge. When you talk about what was going through your head and what you, I know you said, I don't think you knew there were protesters outside. We've talked about this. You've dealt with these people before. Was there ring camera on the door? Did you think they were armed? Like, what was the perceived threat that you identified? Yeah. I might have snapped at you the last time you said, I, aren't you used to it yet? You've dealt with it before. I don't think you ever get used to anybody coming to your house. It was frightening. I know that the protest have escalated. Even at the last debate, a guy ran toward the stage. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Even at the art museum when they surrounded me and I fell to the ground, you, you don't know what is going to happen. Sometimes there are protesters that mean well, but then there's people on the fringe who you don't know whether they're going to take advantage of you. I, I deal with this in a calm manner, so people think that I'm used to it. Well, I'm here to tell you I'm not. I'm not. I'm especially not used to anybody coming to my house. And so we do the best we can. We're human beings. Um, you see your husband's firearm. Do you, do you registered? Do you, are you registered to have a firearm? Are there other gun 
I can tell you the firearm is registered, and I will allow the police to do their job at this point. My husband and I are both thankful nobody was hurt. Did you know he was going to the No, I didn't. How much of this do you think is instigated or politically done? I don't know. I just don't know. The people are worth it. There's a thousand lawyers, 2,200 employees every day who go in and uh, prosecute some of the toughest criminals in LA County to keep us safe. I'm not going to let them down. I will not let them down. I will not let them down.